the Holy Spirit. Now, this is an important chapter for understanding the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because in Christianity today, there is these extremities, extremes. Now, on one extreme, there is this overemphasis and also wrong understanding of who the Holy Spirit is, what his roles are. That happens in Christianity. So on the one hand, you have a movement that is so um, focused on just the Holy Spirit. And then you have the other extreme, where because of the charismatic movements, um, many erroneous ideas and practices concerning the Holy Spirit, now you have the other extreme where Christians can be so afraid of this doctrine of the Holy Spirit that we avoid talking about the Holy Spirit. We avoid even thinking about the Holy Spirit. Now these two extremes needs to be resolved not by balancing the understanding but by biblical understanding, all right? So, we want to learn about, well, who the Holy Spirit is. What are His roles as seen in Scriptures? And then, address some of the many misconceptions, many difficult Bible passages about the Holy Spirit. So today, God willing, we want to know who He is, what His roles are. The next lesson, God willing, to address some of the common misconception like, did the Old Testament people have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? This is something that is often misunderstood by believers, young and old. And then finally, talk about, well, some passages that seem to be very difficult to reconcile about the Holy Spirit, all right? So now, let us look at chapter, lesson number nine, the Holy Spirit. Now, who is the Holy Spirit? Now, if you turn to 1 John 5, 7, please. 1 John 5, 7, today we'll turn to Scriptures because we want to see from Scriptures who the Holy Spirit is. 1 John 5, 7. 1 John 5, 7. Now, let's read together. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, and the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. So here we have the definitive verse on the Trinity. The Trinity. We always accept well, in the Trinity, we always accept, well, there is the Father. The Word, obviously, is Jesus Christ. The Word, as we are told, is Christ made flesh, all right? So, he, the Word often refers to Jesus Christ himself. And then, the Holy Ghost is also mentioned in the Trinity because God says, these three are one. These three are one. We studied the doctrine of the Holy of the Trinity already. We can't explain. We can only describe what the Bible tells us. Now, sometimes we say, "Wow, what is a ghost? Sounds so scary." It's just an old English word that simply says he is a spirit. All right, a spirit. This is not like as today we use this word. Ghost means scary, frightening um, creature. All right, but. Simply means spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Now, if the Bible mentions the Holy Spirit as part of the Trinity, then the first thing we must realize that He is, what would you say, uh, Phoebe? If He is in the Holy Trinity, then He is? Louder? Very good. He is God. He is God. These three are one, one in same essence. God the Father is God. God the Son is God. And if Holy Spirit mentioned as one, then He is God. Now, sometimes we don't think of the Holy Spirit as God. 
We just think of Him as, well, a spirit. Spirit, we don't think about it, but God is a spirit, right? So He is God. Do not think of the Holy Spirit as simply as a power, a power. Because some people think, well, there is Father, a being. Son, a being. But Spirit, well, Spirit is maybe just um, a moving power of God. No, the Bible says He is one, he is, part, he is a being. Three in one, being. So the Holy Spirit must be seen and understood as that. Sometimes we think of the Holy Spirit as like some, some Christians even write books and say, He's like electricity, all right? Electricity. It's just a, a force, a moving power that generates something. But it is God the Father, God the Son that's really working. And He uses a power, that's all. He's not really a being, not really God. So that is number one. The first thing we must be clear about, He is God. Now, can you think of another passage that confirms that He is God? Now, write this down. Acts chapter 5, verse 3. Acts chapter 5, verse 3. Once, someone shared when we came back from evangelism, this person said he met a Christian and then sharing the gospel, this person asked one of our worshippers, well, how do you know that the Holy Spirit is God? See, this Christian all the while thinks that the Holy Spirit is simply a power, a moving force of God. You know, like the people of the world, they like to watch Star Wars and they say, may the force be with you. He's just like a force kind of thing. And very amazingly, incredibly, you will hear pastors preaching on the pulpit. When they talk about the Holy Spirit, they say, oh, may the force be with you. The Holy Spirit is like the force. They bring in all this kind of rubbish, movies, to denote the Holy Spirit. He is not just a force. He is God. Refer to Him as God, not force. So influenced by movies, so Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 5, verse 3. So how to answer this Christian who think that the Holy Spirit is just a force? Acts chapter 5. Now let's read from verses 3 um, to verse 5. Reading. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? and to keep back part of the price of the land. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, hast thou not received this thing in thine heart? Uh, why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Now he said in verse 3, Why did you lie to the Holy Ghost? And then in verse, five, in verse 4, it's made clear. Who is the Holy Ghost? Why hast thou lied unto God? You have not lied to men, but to God. So scriptures emphasizes, makes it clear, the Holy Spirit is God. So Christian, whenever we read the word Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost in the Bible, whenever you think about His work, you must relate to Him. You must have glorious thought of Him. You must consider Him and perceive Him as God. This is something that is very missing very often when we think about the Holy Spirit. Now, when you realize that He is God, means He is the, the worship, the rightful place in our hearts, in our thoughts, in our attitude towards the Holy Spirit must be that of glorifying Him submission to Him, and having the highest thought of Him, right? So, He is God. So, that's the first thing we must establish. Now, the second thing is, people may think that, well, the Holy Spirit is just, well, a force, and then, yeah, so He's God. He is the Creator as well. Turn to Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. The Holy Spirit is also the Creator, did you ever think of that? All right, First, uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. Let's read together. And the earth was without form and void, 
and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Here is the creation work of the Holy Spirit. Not just the Father, not just the Son. We must view Him as the Creator. Means these things in the universe, us included, did not come into existence without the involvement of the Holy Ghost. Right? So, don't go to the extreme. I don't want to think about the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is this charismatic movement thing. No, you must have glorious thoughts of Him, the Holy Ghost, Creator. Now, not only that, the Holy Ghost is the giver of the Word of God, the giver of the Word of God. Now, let's turn to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. 2 Peter chapter 1, Second Peter, chapter 1, verse 21. Now, let's read verse 20 first, all right? Let's read verse 20 and 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit ghost. Now here, God makes it clear. He wants us to understand that prophecy of Scripture, now prophecy is not just simply foretelling, it's also forthtelling. So when you read the word prophecy in the Bible, it includes both. It can include both. Prophecy can mean foretelling the future, things being revealed to us, written, told to us about the future, what will happen, prophecies. But prophecies in the Bible can simply also mean preaching, instructions, admonitions. So prophecy can be just preaching forth what you and I ought to be. All right? So prophecy of the Scripture, anything that is in the Bible, is not of any private interpretation. Because some of the Christians began to think, well, you know, all these things written in the Bible is of private interpretation. Private interpretation means, well, you know, Paul, the apostles, they, on their own minds, in their own minds, private, in their own minds, personal, had some ideas, and then they interpret what God wants to say. They interpret what God is, so they write it down and send it to the churches. Now, God says, scriptures is, are not out of the personal imaginations of human, not even the apostles. Now, how do we get scriptures? Now, God wants us to know. Look at verse 21. Came not in old time, means right from the beginning, the very first book of the Bible, right from the very beginning of any word that is written that will be called scripture from old time. It's not by the will of man, emphasized again. The emphasis is man, Man's own thinking, but, God makes it clear, but, big emphasis. Now, holy men of God spake. He said, well, isn't it? They wrote, they talked about it, and then get written down. These are holy men. But God does not want to think it's the holy men's thinking, holy men's word. God emphasizes they were moved. How were these holy men to know what to write? They were moved by the Holy Ghost. They were moved by the Holy Ghost. So it is the Holy Ghost that worked in their minds, worked in their hearts. Every single word that they wrote is through the moving, the influence, the control of the Son, the Holy Ghost. So you and I, whenever we read scriptures, we must see that every single word is the Holy Ghost moving men to write it. An article, an adjective, a verb, every phrase is moved by the Holy Ghost. That is why we always say the Word of God. We don't say the inspired men, all right? We don't say inspired words of men. 
It's the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. The words of God are the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Moved men. We should use biblical words, all right? Only the words are inspired. The words are inspired. Inspired in the Bible means the breath, all right? It's not the breath. When we say inspired of men, it means breath of men. But this breath of God, the Holy Ghost. So attribute, attribute the scriptures to the Holy Ghost, not to inspired men, all right? Please be clear. You can say God, the Holy Spirit moved men to write inspired words. Be biblical in your thinking. Otherwise, you give glory to the Apostle Paul. That is why Peter and Paul, they would always remind the churches, when you receive the word of God, you did not receive it as of the words of men, but of God. Which part of the Trinity? The Holy Spirit. All right, so handle the word and say, these are the words of God the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. So both Old Testament and New Testament inspired words of the Holy Ghost. Now then, the next one, the next thing to learn is, now the Holy Ghost, being the one who gives the word, is the one that enables men to understand the word. All right, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So he is God. He's the one in the Trinity that moved men to write the words of God. And now he is the man, he's the God that gives understanding. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now, let's look at verse 6, uh, verse 16, sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now, let's first read um, from verse 13, all right? Verse 13 um, to 16. 13 to 16. Now, reading. Which things we also speak, not the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, but he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? but we have the mind of Christ. Now here, the Apostle Paul said, well, the things that we speak as apostles and as a result gets written, it's not the wisdom of men. Now you see, the, the Apostle Paul, and we must learn this very important principle, makes sure he gives all glory to God because you see, the writings of the Apostle Paul, they were amazing. They were amazing. And he was the one that God would use to reveal so many prophecies of the future. He would be the one that God would use to write so many wise things to counsel the church. And he would be the one that God would use to give commands. You know how powerful a position that is? I can tell you the future. I tell you what to do. And I can write things which you can't even think of. They are so wise. He said, but I want you to know, it's not the wisdom of man. He understood that the Holy Spirit is God. He understood that the Holy Spirit is the one who gave every single word. And he made sure that he gave glory to the Holy Spirit. So you see, when we have the right understanding, we are very careful when we are, when we are used of God to explain the Word of God. And people understand the Word of God. And they love the Word of God. And they, their questions get clarified. And then, or even be led to be saved through your sharing of the Gospel. We must be very careful and never think that we are, we are so clever, we understood the Word. Because look at verse 14. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit, for they are foolishness. Now, we cannot understand the things of God. Look at verse 11, all right? 
Or 10 and 11, all right? Now, 10 and 11, let's read together. But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now, here, God says, the natural man means even after salvation, we still have the flesh. We cannot understand the Word of God. Please know this. The only reason why you and I can understand the Word of God is because the Spirit of God reveals it to us. So don't be so proud when you can understand certain doctrines, when you can discern between right and wrong, when you understand what is wrong with certain movements. Don't be so proud and so... Um, so, so high and mighty and think that you can understand. Why can't these people understand? It's simple because God made you see. So when you help these people, always have that humility. God, I am so thankful that you opened my eyes and I could see what is wrong with the charismatic movement, with the Roman Catholic um, movement, with all these new evangelical movement. I can, t I can discern. They cannot humbly help them, right? So, please understand that the understanding of God's Word comes from the Holy Ghost. Now, it means this. Every time you open the Bible to do your devotion at home, to read the Bible, don't just jump into it open. All right, today is chapter 5 of, of uh, Gospel of John, and then you start reading it. Ah, let me see. Let me see what I can understand of it. Be humble. Kneel before God and say, would you help by sending the Holy Spirit to help me understand today as I read this chapter? Open my eyes of understanding. That is why at every worship we pray, right? Together in the pastoral prayer, I lead you to pray. God send your Holy Spirit to grant us understanding because the natural man cannot understand. Neither do we want to receive. It's the work of the Holy Spirit when it comes to the Word. All right? He gives the word, and he's the one who gives understanding. Now, not only that, here he say, he teaches. Now, Christ himself said this. Let's turn to John chapter 14, quickly. John chapter 14. You see, there is so much of the Holy Spirit that we seldom think about. John chapter 14. Now, let's read verse 26 together. John chapter 14, verse 26. Reading. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, not only God, the Holy Spirit, is the one who grants us understanding. Christ himself explains the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Number one, he said he will teach you. He will teach you. He is our teacher. We pray that as well. It's a biblical prayer. May your Holy Spirit be our teacher today. When you open the Bible to read every day, Lord, may your Holy Spirit be my teacher today. Then the next one. So he's a teacher. Now when you know, understand that he is the teacher, be receptive. Be receptive. When you read scriptures, it's God that is telling you what to do. When you read, the, when the Word of God is preached to you and it's from the Bible, don't look at it as, yeah, the pastor is trying to teach us again. Christ said the Holy Ghost is our teacher. Receive it when it's biblical. Respond to it, all right? Now, the Christian must always remember this. One of the biggest hindrances to us receiving the Word of God and benefiting is this. You look at Scriptures being taught and preached, as the words of men. Why do the apostles emphasize frequently, these are the words of God, these are the words of God, these are the words of God. He is the teacher. He is the giver of the word. Because congregation can slowly begin to resist the word of the Holy Spirit. How? When you are angry at the pastor, when you are angry at church, or when you are angry at the facilitator, you begin to reject everything that the person says. You don't connect it to God, the Holy Spirit, is speaking to you. Now, I'm not saying I'm, I'm so powerful. 
you better listen. But if it is the Word of God, it is the Holy Spirit that is teaching you. Receive it humbly. You don't like the person. Sometimes God will send the very person that we don't like to teach us, to humble us. Receive it. I was very thankful once. I had to counsel someone, <laughs> a couple. Now, both of them initially got very upset. They did not understand. They were crying and they were upset and all that. But when they finally understood, yeah, it makes sense. You're right. Now, initially, after that, I was wondering, when I preach, will they always hold a grudge? I did it for their good. They understood, but will they hold a grudge? I asked them in the room, from now, would you, would you hear the word and receive the word differently? Say, no, pastor, don't worry. We always separate these things. When the word of God is preached, we always take it as from God. As long as it's from, it's biblical and from the word. You see, that is why we must understand it's the Holy Spirit that is teaching us. Now, next one, Christ also said this. Or before that, you see, the problem is this. The disciples knew that in this chapter, Christ just told them, He is going to leave them very soon. They are so used to listening to Christ talking to them. Christ, they knew whom they knew is God, scolding, reprimanding, correcting, admonitioning leading them. They're so used to seeing the physical Jesus Christ teaching them. Christ had to tell them, I will go away and I need you to know this. When you receive the word coming from now onwards after when I'm not around, you must understand it is the Holy Spirit that is giving to you. He's giving it to you. You must not take it as just the words of the apostles. That's all. So Christ needed them to understand. Do we understand this? It is God that is teaching us. Next one, Christ emphasizes. All right, in verse 26. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. You see, he emphasized again. I, you're used to me talking to you. And when someone reminds you of what I've said to you, please don't take it as from men and get angry. It's the Holy Spirit that's bringing to remembrance. Another role of the Holy Spirit in the Word, he gives, he teaches, enables us to understand, convicts us. Now, the third one is he brings to remembrance. He brings to remembrance. Means a few things. Number one, sometimes it's through men. We learn the word. We forget. We go back to our old ways, our old character, our old sins. God will send messages to remind us. To remind us. Reminders are from God. Don't keep thinking, ah, and not the same message again. Someone else may need the reminder. Maybe you need the reminder. Maybe I need the reminder, all right? So he brings to remembrance. Now, the other thing about he brings to remembrance whatever Christ has said is this. Now, when we share the gospel, when we help someone to understand, when we give an answer to someone about our faith, we've been emphasizing that in, in uh, First Peter, ready to give an answer to every man, ready to give an answer always to every man. When they ask you about your faith, sometimes we fear. Uh, I don't know whether, you know, um, I, yeah, I learn, I, 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 I learn all this. And then we, we are very panicky, then we, we try very hard in our flesh. You must learn to pray. God, bring to remembrance the things that you have taught me so that I can help someone understand the errors that they are in. Help someone, encourage someone to obey the Lord. Because you have reminded me about my sins. Now, it's amazing for those who have experienced this. You know, sometimes someone asks you some things, and then the words of God just flows, just flows. You're able to quote scriptures. You are able to answer. You're able to think. Please don't be proud. God says the Holy Spirit is helping you to remember, leading you to the right passages, leading you to the right way to explain this so that someone can understand. Don't walk away and say, you know, you know, I remember hearing someone tell me, a young person, say, Pastor, you know, I, I feel that I have an amazing gift. I say, all right, I'd like to hear it. I say, tell me more. The person say, I have an unusual ability to understand God's word. And more so, I have this unusual uh, ability to, to explain things, to answer questions. 
What must God say is the Holy Spirit that brings to remembrance the moment we think we are the one who remembered. And we are the one who is so good at bringing the right passages. God will stop using us because we steal the glory from the Holy Ghost. Christ himself would say, the Holy Spirit. Christ himself gave glory to the Holy Spirit. He is the one who will bring to remembrance. He did not say, I will bring to remembrance. He just points the people and says, Holy Ghost will do that work. So remembrance is something that comes from God. But of course, you know what this means. Whenever you remember this phrase, then you know the Holy Spirit cannot bring anything to remembrance if you do not study the Word of God. There's nothing to remember. You go to your examination. You sit down. You want to answer the question, but you never studied. You also understand it in the secular realm. You don't study. You have nothing to remember. So all the studying is to build up that, reserve, that reservoir of the Word of God that the Holy Spirit will use. You do not study. You are useless. To God. You do not study, you are useless even in helping yourself to remember what not to do, what is sin, what to do, how to help yourself grow, right? So the Holy Ghost does that. Now, this is a wonderful promise. God Himself will personally teach you, God Himself will personally help you to remember for your own sake, for using you. How encouraging is this to study the Word of God? God will do that. Now, God also say that he will bring to remembrance the things that you ought to say to men. Sometimes people are afraid when they go for job interviews. They are afraid when they are asked to answer certain th things. God says, I will help you, all right? I will help you. Now, so quickly, so that's another one, bring to remembrance, teach. Now, then we also know that God, the Holy Spirit, is involved in, is the one who, who would call you, work in your heart to save you. Turn to first, uh, turn to John chapter 3, verse 10. All right, we are here in John, John chapter 3, verse 10. We studied this in the previous week. See, the Holy Spirit does, is involved in so many things. We seldom think and give glory to Him. John chapter 3, all right, verse 10. Now, let us, uh, let's read from verses 8 to 10. 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whether, whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Now, what is Christ saying? Look at verse 8. The context is how to be saved. And God says how to be saved is verse 6. You must be born of the Spirit. Your new birth, your birth in Christ, is the work of the Holy Spirit. You see, Nicodemus was a teacher of God's Word. And he said, how can these things be? How is it that the Holy Spirit can give birth Give me the new birth. And Christ re reprimanded him. You are a teacher of scriptures to my people. You claim to be that. But yet you don't know these things? Christians, we must know the work of the Holy Ghost. Now, verse 8 says, As the wind bloweth where it listeth, you hear the sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from. So Christ explains, like the wind. You hear, but where is it coming from? You hear the wind. And then after that, you may feel it, but which direction is going after that, you don't know. What is God saying? He that is born of the Spirit. God is saying it's the work of the Holy Spirit. You cannot understand, but you must know. I want to say that again. The work of the Holy Spirit is not something that you can, you can you know, well, explain and understand in that kind of detail, but you must just accept. Salvation is of the Holy Spirit. How? You don't know. A person that is cursing and swearing at Jesus Christ and making fun of Him one moment in the next hour breaks down and plead for salvation from Christ. And after that, immediately go home and preach the gospel to the family members, to friends. 
Even the friends are shocked. You used to hate this religion. Why is it now that you want me to believe in this religion? No man can understand. What is this no man can understand about then? It is about the glorious power of the Holy Spirit. Salvation is of the Lord. It's the Holy Spirit that comes into your heart. He works. Please don't be proud. You know, I heard the gospel that time, and then I understood, and then I believed in Christ. Please don't think like that. It's the Holy Spirit that moved your heart and saved you. Always understand, I cannot explain, but I can only tell you, I was a sinner. The God, the Holy Spirit, convicted me. I would not have want to accept Christ. He is the one who irresistibly not only help me understand, but make me receive Christ as my Savior. My friends, are you a believer? This is the passage we just talked about. Nicodemus, he said, I want to go to heaven. I want to be saved. And God says, you must be born again. Would you respond? Because, you see, when the Holy Ghost work, you must respond. Turn to Him. Ask Him to save you. He works irresistibly when you get saved. Turn to Him and give Him glory, all right? So think of the Holy Ghost that way. Be very grateful to the Holy Ghost moving in your heart, sent by God. So He's the one who called. Well, we have no time to look, but we studied, right, in First Peter. Who preached the gospel to the people during Noah's time? Who? God says, the Spirit of Christ who worked through the godly men. For example, Noah at that time, and preach the gospel. So, God the Holy Spirit is the one who speaks, not Noah. God, Noah was just an instrument. Don't be proud when you lead someone to Christ. Don't steal the glory from the Holy Spirit. There are people who would like to say, you know how many people are led to Christ? I remember when I first came to this church, someone even told me, hey, you know, you, you must be careful of this person, you know, you know how many people he led to Christ? I say, well, you know, we all should be thankful that we are used by God. But no one should ever say, this person is the reason why people are in church. Never think like that. Always think the Holy Spirit is the one. Alright? Otherwise, we will exalt men. When you lead someone to Christ, go home, immediately kneel down and say, Lord, Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to speak through me. Do not go around and say, you know, uh, who led this person to Christ? You guess, you guess, you guess. Someone actually said that to me. You guess who led this person to Christ? You know the person wants to say is you, right? So always give glory to the Holy Spirit when He uses you. Now, then quickly, next one. Now, the Holy Spirit is the one that gives abilities. Exodus chapter 3, quickly. Exodus chapter 3. He is the one who gives abilities. Exodus chapter 3. Now, Exodus chapter 3 is um, God... Uh, sorry, Exodus chapter 31. My apologies. Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31 is the instructions to build the tabernacle. Now, you know the tabernacle was amazing. All the craft, all the artwork were amazing and how everything fitted together to the millimeter was perfect. Is it because the craftsmen were so good? No. All right, Exodus chapter 31, verses 1 to 3. Now, you will see, the Lord said to Moses, See, I have called by, by name. And he said, I call these people by name. And he gave a list of people. And verse 3, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works. Now, how did these people have abilities? Because God filled them with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is used of God to enable us to do things for Him. Whenever you do something that, is, that turned out very well, the first thought in your mind after understanding the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, is to give glory to God. It is not me. Don't go wrong. You know, I was so clever, you know. The other day I thought of this, I thought of this. I, wow, I did this. Wow, then everything turned out good. Wow. You know, don't think like that. 
Always immediately in your heart, humble. The Holy Spirit gave me knowledge, gave me wisdom, gave me understanding, pointed my thinking to that. Now, this is the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. This is what, how our thinking must change. Because God knew after the temple comes up, people, the workmen will feel that, wow, this church, this temple, this, this work, this, this uh, committee, why is so successful? Because of me. The doctrine of the Holy Spirit must change our thinking and make us humble. The more humble you are, the more God will use you. Now, next one. All right, the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, we won't turn there, we lack of time, Acts chapter 2, is the one who give gifts. Give gifts, all right? If you want, Acts chapter 2, 37, 38. The Holy Spirit is the one who give gifts. The abilities, the talents, the gift, if you are gifted in something, please know, same principle, it came from the Holy Ghost. All right, so now this week we will just study this. Actually, I just want to give you one more, right? Pardon my, my delay. Now, the last one is Romans 8, 26. He is the one who helps you to pray. Please know that. When you pray, understand the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. God says the Holy Spirit is the one who brings to remembrance things to pray for. The Holy Spirit is the one who, who makes, helps you pray rightly. You'll be amazed when you pray. You have the wrong ideas, but when you pray, suddenly you start to think rightly and you pray rightly. Why? Wow, I'm so clever. I'm so holy. I'm so godly. You see, wow, I, I think rightly even in my prayers. It's the Holy Spirit. Every time we pray, Lord, may you send your Holy Spirit to help us to pray aright, to know what to pray for. The Holy Spirit is the one who, the Bible says, makes intercession for us. He also prays for us. He makes us pray the right things. Before you pray, just like before you read the Word, Ask God, may your Holy Spirit bring to remembrance. May your Holy Spirit teach us to pray aright according to your will. That must be our understanding of this Holy Spirit work, all right? So don't just kneel down, read the Bible, kneel down, just pray. Know that the Holy Spirit is whom you need in the Trinity in these areas. Let us turn to God in prayer. What do we have here? Top five reasons why church dropouts. Uh, what church dropouts say, why they stop attending church. Now, please remember 66% of, well, I take the American view, um, they are the most readily available results. They stop attending church at least a year after turning 18. So far,